Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Lore. It's been a while, had a little vacation, and I wanted to come back because I saw this awesome article written by iVPN and the article is titled, Your VPN Provider Won't Go to Jail for You for Five Dollars. And I think this is actually a broader issue than just VPN providers, and so I wanted to talk about it, give you some of my perspective on the issue, and actually how this ties into probably a lot more things in the privacy space than you might think, including email providers, software you use day to day, and even big companies like Apple and whatnot. Pretty much the iVPN article, I feel like it boils down to two things. One, when people say that a company won't go to jail for you for $5, which is something that I've said too, um, what it's not taking into consideration is that there are things that companies can do in advance. Okay, apparently Cat is joining. Um, and the second thing is that there actually are a lot of times choices in the matter once something happens. So the first thing I talk about is choosing the right jurisdiction. And this is probably one of the biggest misconceptions, um, especially in the VPN industry. The biggest thing I see is 14 eyes versus five eyes versus nine eyes and all of this stuff. And I'm not even here to get into that debate if that matters, but I think a lot of people really get wrong what jurisdiction means and especially the VPN space. What I'm looking for when I'm looking for jurisdiction is whether or not a country has the jurisdiction or the ability to do something like require a company to hand over user data. How are VPNs classified in the country? Are they classified as ISPs? Um, if so, are they uh, subject to the same laws that ISPs are subject to? Are they required to log in that country? What happens in a situation where um, a person is doing something illegal and they're using that service? Does that jurisdiction have the ability to request that user data? If so, what? because that's what varies country to country. When we start going into the Five Eyes, 14 Eyes stuff, that's data sharing on a broad level between governments, and it has very little to do with the actual uh, legal jurisdiction that a government has to crack down on an individual company. Again, companies are legal entities, and just like humans, if the companies are also breaking the law and not following the jurisdiction, the people who are running the companies will get into trouble. And that's where this whole, your VPN won't go to jail for you for $5 thing comes from. But um, like IVPN says, the jurisdiction you choose can heavily influence whether or not the, they're ever going to suffer an issue like this in the first place. So that's the first thing that a lot of people have to watch out for, and that's why jurisdiction matters. Another point that IVPN uh, really introduces here, and it's a very big talking point, and it's why it's such an important thing, and it's why it's on our VPN charts, and it's why it's referenced in our VPN reviews, and all of this stuff, is that these VPN providers should try to know as little about you as possible. Uh, that includes email even. Some of the services, uh, off the top of my head, I can tell you that iVPN, Mulvad, and Winscribe, all three of those services don't even require an email to register. And all three of them uh, have some form of private payment option to some extent. So um, those are already really great starting points. I would say that from my knowledge, Mulvad seems to be taking this to the most extreme, to the point where they're even removing some often sought after features in the name of reducing the amount of data they collect about their users. And so again, if a company has nothing to uh, hand over in the first place, even if they comply with the law enforcement request, uh, they might only be handing over very superficial information. In fact, this is what makes Signal so powerful because there have been proven court cases where they've had Signal hand over user data and it's very superficial stuff about the account. It's never messages, it's never people they're talking to. It was when the account was created and also the last time they logged in, which you know in some situations might be a problem. It's definitely not perfect, but that's a hell of a lot better than what you'll see in some other services and what they're able to hand over. What a provider knows about you boils down to the actual data. So in the example of messengers, because it's an easy example, um, that's the actual messages you're sending to people. So a common uh, way to avoid collecting that data is to implement end to end encryption. So none of these services can hand over actual messages. But that's kind of a bare bones step one nowadays. From there, you like to go and see metadata collection and what kind of metadata is protected and what the service doesn't see. And then we can even go a little bit beyond that sometimes to um, even any unique identifiers collected in the first place. That's where Signal might fall because Signal still collects a phone number. And then I'm gonna combine the last couple points that IVPN makes about uh, 
pretty much things that you can do before things go wrong. And it's uh, having a protective privacy policy as well as being transparent about requests. What this boils down to is there's a privacy policy that clearly details what they collect, what they don't collect, uh, things where, or situations where things can go wrong, uh, they're gonna detail exactly what is used for what. And that's very important because you now have uh, the ability to take a peek inside at least what a company is saying. And a lot of companies, uh, if you read what they're saying, it's actually people say, well, what if they're lying about the privacy policy? Sometimes you don't even have to get that far. A lot of VPN companies just straight up tell you the information they collect, and a lot of it's not fantastic. So um, before we even get into the, are they lying about their privacy policy? Um, a lot of services, even if you take what they're saying at face value, you still want to avoid them. So that already eliminates a huge portion of the market and also transparent about requests. Um, I like to see warrant canaries. I like to see transparency requests. I like to see annual reports. I like to see that kind of stuff. The two services that I think are polar opposites in this realm, both of which are incredibly popular, and two services that I personally recommend are Winscribe and Molvad. Winscribe has an extremely public and transparent transparency report, and you can read exactly how many requests they receive and what they do with those requests, and I really appreciate this. Molvad has nothing like this. Uh, Molvad has stated, at least to me in the past, that, well, it's marketing because uh, they could just put out any BS numbers and people just have to believe it anyway. But that's kind of missing the point, in my opinion, because when you do release numbers and you release data, you're now holding yourself to something. Um, even if what you're saying is not truthful, if it ever leaks that that wasn't truthful, now that company's in a buttload of trouble. And so when you're putting yourself out there and putting out those numbers and putting out transparency requests, you're still uh, putting something at risk in favor of your users. And so I really wish that Mulvat had a transparency report um, because they just don't believe in them. Um, whereas Winscribe does. And so that's a big selling point for Winscribe in my eyes from a purely transparency focused perspective. And so that kind of covers the preparation. So again, just to summarize the preparation, jurisdiction matters a ton, privacy policies and transparency matters a ton, as well as the information that the service collects in the first place. And this extends to email providers, it extends to cloud services, it extends to drive storage, it extends to VPSs, it extends to VPNs. Keep in mind too that different things in your life, like a VPN or an email provider, could have different requirements. You don't have to have the same exact a rigorous uh, <laughs> criteria for everything universally. So it's okay that your VPN, you might have a looser criteria for than your email provider or vice versa. It really just depends on your unique use case. But um, these are all important things that you should really be taking into consideration before you sign up for a service. Now, what happens if a service, even if they do all the right prep, are caught in a situation where they have to hand over user data? And so the question again comes up, Will your VPN protect you for $5? And this is really going to be a, a mixed bag. So uh, one of the most common examples that people re reference is Lavabit, which was the email provider that Edward Snowden was using uh, when he was trying to communicate with journalists. And Lavabit received a gag order from the NSA, which they actually didn't comply with. They just shut down their service. But that's a very rare situation. A lot of times uh, when companies are forced to comply with law enforcement requests, they do because the alternative is they run out of business or they're uh, at worst case scenario, depending on the jurisdiction, they could even be uh, thrown in jail if they're breaking the law for you. So IVPN brings up a few uh, solutions and things that companies can do. First is moving jurisdictions. So a company can theoretically move jurisdictions to try to protect user data. Obviously they do reference that it's uh, heavily complicated and you can't just move jurisdictions overnight. Um, but the second one that everyone has the ability to do is have a warrant canary. So a warrant canary pretty much signals to people, hey, we're, we're no longer safe. Uh, so it's normally just a web page that's normally signed with a PGP key so you can verify it's them. And normally it's like, as of this date, uh, everything is, is safe, we're good, everything's all good. You can trust us, nothing's happened. But if something triggers a warrant canary and the warrant canary changes or they say, hey, we're no longer safe, then that's where warrant canary comes in. This is something else that's not found in services like Molvat. And they also uh, kind of say it's for marketing purposes, but I disagree with this. I think that it is a thing that uh, makes people say, hey, what, what went on there? It's a way to trigger and alert your audience or your customers that something isn't right anymore. So 
I personally am a fan of Warren Canaries. They're not perfect, they have issues. Uh, sometimes they're even worthless, but I still don't think that it's broadly a thing to call worthless. I think that it is very valuable um, in certain contexts. And the third option that IVPN mentions, which is the obvious one, is just shutting down their operations. Now, of course, IVPN and their own blog article are gonna say that they would do this um, if they were ever in this position, but ideally they don't ever get in that position in the first place and they don't have to make that choice. But um, that's definitely the article, so I'm gonna, I think I'm probably gonna have the video going while I was scrolling through this. So I'm gonna stop that right now. But um, I wanted to kind of talk about this on a broad level because um, this is something that I say, it's this service won't <laughs> um, keep you out of jail for $5, or they're not going to go to jail for you for $5 a month. One of the most notable situations that um, comes to mind is the whole Proton situation. A lot of people were upset with Proton during the climate activist situation where they handed over an IP address. They didn't just wake up one day and go, ah, I just want to hand over a user's data. No, they were legally, uh, for, they were legally served a request that required them by law to hand over a user's data or else they shut down or worse, depending on how uh, much they didn't comply with the order and what kind of laws they would break if they were to do that. Um, but in this case, because Proton followed uh, a lot of the precautions that I was talking about in terms of not collecting very much user data, the only thing they handed over was the user's IP address. I consider that a big win. With that said, it depends on your threat model. For certain people, handing over an IP address might be the end. So what I really wanna drill home here is that Proton, I think, is actually a perfect example of this was a company that had to comply with law enforcement requests. And the way they handled it was, in my eyes, about as good as it's going to get. Now, we compare this to something like um, a big tech company, just a generic big tech company. If they get a law enforcement request, a lot of times they just comply outright. And a lot of times there aren't protections in place, um, especially if we look at a company like Google. Um, a lot of Google's cloud products don't really implement end-to-end -end encryption. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. For example, your emails aren't. So if anyone wants to request your emails, Google's lawyers might try to fight for you, but you're not in control of that situation. So I think that perspective on this issue is very important. When you're looking at companies like Proton, Signal, all of these services are going to suffer the same issue. They're all going to have to comply with law enforcement unless, unless it's some kind of a decentralized project. And this is where something like Tor really excels because Tor doesn't, Things like Tor, Briar, and whatnot, Briar's peer-to-peer, -peer, for example. So it's just you and another person. There's no central server in that. It's just you directly communicating with someone else, and there's no central company, central entity, central server, central anything that a law enforcement agency can go and say, we need to request data from this person, and they're legally obligated to do so. This is where peer-to-peer -peer services really excel. Now, peer-to-peer -peer services still aren't perfect. There are other ways to collect data about people from a peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, using a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, but it's going to be a lot of times a lot harder, and it's definitely not as easy as just knocking on a company's door and asking them for a user's data. Similarly, like I was saying with Tor, Tor is also very decentralized and anyone can run their server. So there definitely have been instances where uh, law enforcement try to uh, knock down on a Tor exit node and they try to collect all those users' data for that exit node. But first off, Tor is designed so that in theory, those users are still very protected. But even if they weren't, at least this is just an individual and it's not like Tor is one the central entity that um, anyone can come knocking on their door to request any user's information for. So this is where decentralized and peer-to-peer -peer services really win. And so some takeaways. Again, you can avoid centralized entities altogether. If you go through a centralized entity, look at the precautions they put in place to protect you, including things like not collecting information in the first place when they can, or if they're going to do that, take a look at their transparency reports and things of that nature. But broadly speaking, I'd say the most important takeaway is just being educated and aware on this issue and how it might impact you. For a lot of you, this probably isn't really within the scope of your threat model, but for some of you, it definitely might be something that you need to consider. So this has all just been a very educational, just hands-on um, discussion that I wanted to share with you. These are just my general thoughts on the whole concept of, will a company protect you for $5? And I think in some situations they can if they're properly prepared to do so. So that's why the preparations are so important. You need to look at these things in advance. You need to look at the precautions companies put in place to protect you in these situations, because if they don't have anything in place, they're not going to do anything. They're not gonna be able to do anything. They're not gonna be able to respond. Uh, if you liked 
this, uh, I definitely encourage you to check out our Patreon at patreon.com uh, slash techlore. Really appreciate it. You guys are all freaking awesome. I'm keeping this content going for free. I'm kind of excited to be back from a little vacation. Um, and yeah, I have some fun content lined up for all of you. So I'll see you all next time on Techlore. If you have any questions or thoughts, definitely leave it down below. And yeah, see you next time.